Okay, so a little bit of curveball. Right. Because I know you, and it maybe doesn't come out of the videos too much. How do you, as a masseuse, discern and hear and are sure of the voice of God? Yes. <laughs> That's what the people are going to be very happy to hear that. No, that was a big deal. It's just, it's answering his question, how do you believe in life? You know, how do you take this hard pill to swallow? It's a little bit easier for me, maybe, I think, because I see the healing stuff. But if you look at the scriptures, they were there. They heard all the prophecies. He told them he was going to die. <laughs> Over. And, and when he died and he came up, they still told him. He, they still didn't believe him. <laughs> and we're like, how can they be that dumb? <laughs> that easy? It's easy. How can the Hebrews go? <laughs> how can the Hebrews go be led by a cloud during the day and a flame of fire at night and have rock come out, water come out of rocks? And they still make a golden cap. How can they be that dumb? And yet the scripture says everything about life. And we're like, no. Because we made our own law that we're going to die. And we'd rather believe that law. Mm. Yeah. So it, there, it must be something great about life that God wants us yeah. to live. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, let's go back to your question then. Here's the thing. We are saying that Christianity it's the relationship with Jesus so a relationship starts and continues only by communication mm -hmm. you can't have a relationship with a person that you don't share your heart with you can but it's a very shallow mm -hmm. way of the relation so uh, so in order to have a deep relationship and have a relationship you need to talk and hear. So this is the first step. So Jesus came, we all come and we, we all say and we all quote that, okay, you know, we, it's not the religion, that's true, but we often fall into a religion and we think the religion is doing, which is. Mm -hmm. But if you really think about it, religion is not hearing God. Very simple. But because if you don't hear God, you have to rely on Moses mm -hmm. to go up to the mountain and tell you what God said. Yeah. And Jesus came and he destroyed that thing. Because if you are not in a relationship, you, know, you are not in a position of hearing and, and talking to God directly without any mediator, if you are not in this position, then you will fall into religion then you need somebody else to tell you what to do. So that's why hearing voice of God, talking and hearing, it's the most important thing in the life of a Christian. Okay? And it's the, the, the easiest thing. Yes. It is easy. It is easy. That's the first thing we need to see. Why do I say it is easy? Because the first step for us is to believe that what God says is the truth. If Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice and will follow me, that means he really meant it. Somebody told me, I don't hear the voice of God. I said, well, you just made Jesus a liar. <laughs> you just did. Well, I don't hear the voice of God all the time. Well, you just made Jesus a liar again. Because he did not say, my sheep will hear my voice if, when, maybe, mm -hmm. sometimes, and not all the times. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like sometimes I've, I really struggle hearing the voice of God. Well, you just made Jesus a liar. Cain kills his brother, and God goes to Cain, and they are having this conversation. He just killed his brother. And he heard God very clear. He didn't struggle to hear. Cain killed his brother, and he's like in the presence of God, talking to God, and hearing, and talking to him. Also, I think you are more righteous than Cain because of the blood of Jesus. 
So here's the thing. So this is the first step. And I believe that. I was, uh, I was telling Vanessa and Tyler the other day, it's not a boasting thing. It's not. I'm in, a, I'm in a position in my life that I hear the Spirit of God all the time. But because it hasn't been, like I don't struggle hearing the Spirit of God. Like it doesn't matter. Like the moment I make a decision, I am on, on it. It could be, I could know you for a long time or I could know, see this person and I've never known this person. I hear the Spirit, the Spirit of God. So now, here's the thing. Do I hear the Spirit of God all the time? No. Why? Because I don't pay attention. But that's my first step to belief that God is not mute, I am not deaf. But because, there's not, because there is not a teaching for us how to hear the Spirit or hear the Spirit of God, we don't understand what does it mean. So that's why Masood and I, we really put a teaching in this school so we go through the details of it. But if I want to cover that now, so we want to talk just a little about it now. So we think, if I think I heard it, and then I found out it was wrong, that becomes my measuring line whether or not I hear the voice of the Spirit. Um, that's good. You're like reading my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, can you repeat that for <laughs> Yeah. So you that's say, good. okay, I heard God. And then you go do it, and you, you realize, oops, you didn't. Then that mistake becomes your measuring line, whether or not you hear the Spirit of God. Yeah. And you let that to tell you you don't hear. You're yeah. deaf. Becomes a frustration. That is the frustration. That is the problem we fall into. I prophesy over people. I give words of knowledge, and I am wrong. But that doesn't define whether I hear or I don't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's easy. <laughs> you know, you should both. And this is very important because my measuring line is not my experience. <laughs> my measuring line is not my experience. So that's why. Even if I miss it the hundred times, I don't even see I missed it. I see that I hear the voice of God, so I go for it again. I go for it again. I go for it again. Because my experience does not define if I hear the voice of God or not. The problem we have, not only in hearing the voice of God, in having whatever this book says, our problem is we define, we measure our qualifications according to our experience. Because there is an experience that is, speaks louder than what this book says. That's the first step that has to change. Because it doesn't matter how many times I missed it. This book says, I hear the voice of God. That's my focus. That's why I don't camp there. I don't think about it. I don't condemn myself. I don't let that thing to speak to me. I hear the voice of God. <coughs> okay? So this is, this is where you stand on. This is where you stand on. This is your standing position that you are not shakable. It doesn't matter what comes to your mind. I am not shakable because this book says I hear, that means I hear. Done. So here's the thing. That's why I'm saying I'm in a place that I know I hear the voice of God where every time I want. Am I right all the time? No. But that doesn't tell me I don't hear. I hear the voice of God. And because the moment I switched my perspective one day, all of a sudden it became, um, my, my errors are less and less as I go and I move on. 
Okay, so this is this is the standing foundation of the hearing the voice of God. Oh, you know, like I go to prayer and I don't hear. I don't understand that. Who told you you don't hear the voice of God? Adam, who told you you're naked? It's the same voice. So when, when God made you, he didn't make you deaf to spirit. He's not mute. So Masood brings this example. This is really good. So when your kids come to the world, even though you are talking to your kids, and maybe they're hearing, maybe they're not hearing, but they're not responding to you for some times. But the father does not give up talking to his children. You have a, a two months baby, you automatically talk to the baby. Mm -hmm. It's your immediate response. Mm -hmm. But the father keeps talking and keeps calling the name of the son until this son turns mm -hmm. and have a reaction. Mm -hmm. And the father keeps talking mm -hmm. until the son starts speaking. And the father keeps talking mm -hmm. until the son is fluent in speaking. Mm -hmm. That's the thing with God. He is the one who's always speaking to us. Always. Always. And you know what? He keeps us speaking to us until he sees a response to what we heard. Until. And he keeps doing it. Why? Because that is the only way for this child to learn speaking. Hearing. So we come to Christianity. The whole the story of us and God is hearing his voice and is speaking. That's it. This is our reigning with Christ. This is our reigning with Christ in life. No wonder why there's not much reigning because of not hearing and not speaking. What did Jesus really do when he was here on earth? He didn't do anything except speaking. You want to get well? Be well. Go. Be healed. Lazarus, come out. What did he do? He didn't do anything. He just spoke. But he said, whatever I am saying, I am hearing what my father says. So that is the whole story of Christianity. So if we sit and we say, well, I'm not hearing God, you have fallen into a lie that is worse than a religion. Because you do hear him. So, so when, you, when we are clear with this, then all of a sudden it's easy. You don't struggle. Tomorrow you miss it. But that doesn't speak to you. That doesn't tell you your level of growth. If tomorrow you missed it, that does not define how much you have grown in hearing God. That does not define your growth in hearing God. So that's why, for me, that takes the pressure off of me. And I realize that, okay, I'm free to try. And of course, when you come through more understanding of who he is, his mercy, and his grace, you don't have a fear of making a wrong decision. Because so many times we have a fear of making a wrong decision, and those are the times that we often make the wrong decision. Because we have, this, we have a fear. So what happens is, that fear happens to you. Because you are, you are afraid. But what happens is there is a mercy of God that can come to you and reverse what you have done. <laughs> so I was I need to sh I need to talk I need to talk a little about mercy here because we haven't we are not done with mercy but here's the thing it says in the book of Psalms says your mercy comforts me 
I'm writing my book. Get the book, read it though, even though yeah. I'm sharing it with you. <laughs> Your mercy comforts me. I'm going to go very quickly in it. The word comfort is the same word as Genesis chapter 5. Noah, he, they named him Noah. That means comfort because he will comfort us from our, our hard works. If you look at the word comfort, it's a comfort that comes to you because of a change or a reverse that has happened. I repeat that again. The word comfort. <laughs> <laughs> So the word comfort means a comfort that comes to you because of a change or a reverse that has happened. That's why you can be comforted. Noah will bring comfort to us. So the flood comes and his ark sits on a mountain that is called Ar Ararat. This mountain Ararat means cursed, reversed. That's why there is a comfort, because the curse is reversed. Here's the mercy of God. What is he reversing in your life? His mercy comforts you. How? By reversing the mess you have done to bring a comfort to you. Hallelujah. <laughs> so when you understand mercy, then you are not in fear of making any mistakes. That's why there is mercy. Because you are not perfect, but you are perfect. But until you walk into this perfection, you'll miss it. So what we do is we sit there, we camp there, we condemn ourselves. I'm not grown up yet, all these years, da da da, da da da, da da da. And before you know, you are the victim. So now, because there is mercy, that's why we have mercy. I, I, next week, we, go, we will continue about mercy. And I think we will wrap up mercy because it's going to be really powerful next week. So, so when we get that, then we are easy to hear. We are easy to hear the voice of God. Yeah. So now, it's a very big subject. Because hearing the voice of God, no one can teach you how to hear like no one teaches a baby how to hear you know it how to hear you were made the way to know how to hear whatever you need to hear you already have it how who told this baby that is just born that hey the moment you hear somebody calling you then you turn nobody who told them nobody it's the same thing with us. It's the same story with us. Who should teach us how to hear the voice of God? Mm -hmm. God himself. But we can bring examples here and go through the scriptures to understand, okay, how are we, how are we hearing? My life, um, it says when the Holy Spirit comes, he will tell you about things to come. He's there. Come for terror. He is the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. Your mercy comforts me. When is he coming to comfort you? When you are in weakness. When you are in mistakes. Mm -hmm. How does he comfort you? By mercy. And then he'll show you the things to come. So that means that's the Holy Spirit job to enlighten your heart so that you can see what happens tomorrow, what's coming up tomorrow. We were talking uh, last night with Guillermo that uh, every morning, seriously, every morning we need, when we wake up, we need to know how our day looks like. Now, you can't go now sit and try to happen. It's the walk of the Spirit that reveals to you. Mm -hmm. You cannot just go and try, say, okay, now I need to know, see how come I don't know it. No. It's the revealing of the Spirit. As you grow in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit reveals to you what's happened. For me, right now I'm in a place everywhere, when I go to a place, when somebody's inviting me, when I go, I know what's going to happen. 
The Holy Spirit tells me what to expect, who will be there, who are there. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a very awesome. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> Because you are not in the night to go like this. You are in the day. You see it. He reveals to you where you are going to, what you need to say, what you need, because you are in a day. He wants to enlighten your days. He wants to tell you where are you heading to. Those who are in darkness, they don't know where they are going to. That's got to be the new normal though. Like that's the way it needs to be every day. Yeah. yeah because he is the light. Yeah. So I wanna I'm, I know I also want to say something here. I want to say something because here's the thing. The, this the spirit will tell you because you are in him. <laughs> He's telling you the things to come. So now we think the Holy Spirit is gonna reveal to us the accidents and the death and things. No. He will tell you the life, the provision, what's going to happen tomorrow for you. What is my plan for your life tomorrow? What is my plan for you, people around you tomorrow? Who are you going to see? What, do I, what am I doing in their lives? So prophecy, when I start prophesying over a person, this is really what happens. The Holy Spirit is revealing me what is he doing in your life. That's it. What is he, he is going to do in your life? Right? So, so now, the sons of God are those who are led by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. The leading of the Spirit is hearing mm -hmm. and obeying the voice of the Spirit. How are you obeying the voice of the Spirit? Not by doing, by speaking. Not by doing, by speaking. I need, to put, I need to give another example that is coming to my mind that I think is really important. We think God has to tell us what to do in every situation. Mm. That's a wrong way of looking at it. Mm. You are one with him. Okay, that's okay. You can go, you can ask in every situation. That's fine, but you don't have to. He's, he's one with you. Your desire is his desire. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Your desire, what do you want to do? If you have a, if you have a kid, keeps coming to you, Mom, what do I need to do now? Which toy do I need to play right now? Should I play with my bear or should I play with my lion? Play with both. Both. <laughs> this is what we do to God. What would you tell your son? You're like, honey, just go play what you want to. Play with the one. No, 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 you tell me. Okay, go play with the lion. Next time, mom, dad, which one do I need? You, you just, that's your toy. Choose what do you want to do now and just do it and enjoy it. <laughs> so this is very important. This is really important to see it. Right? So that's why, that's why we put ourselves in a confusion position. Because now you don't want to know you need to play with the bear or the, uh, the lion toy. And then you don't hear God. And then you're confused. You don't end up enjoying any of them. Now you're <laughs> condemning yourself and you want to know why you haven't grown up to hear which one. He made it for you. Enjoy it. Because it's not that you do everything only for God. Like your life is for God. Mm. Everything that you do is for God. I'm trying to say how we complicate things sometimes. And yeah. I use this as an example that yeah. uh, then it's like, okay, uh, is he able to provide for this? Of course, mm -hmm. I'm going to buy it. So the moment you take an action, you realize that actually has already done something. The price is cut down mm -hmm. and all of that. So you're able to do this. So the moment actually you start thinking even this way, you're hearing God. 
Because mm -hmm. wow. what is faith other than having an evidence yeah. for what you're hoping for? Right. This is your evidence, mm -hmm. the Word of God. If you look at uh, Hebrews 11, when it says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, right after that he talks about the Word. He says the word is that which made the things that are visible of the things that are in, of the invisible. Mm -hmm. So the invisible was the word and the things that is visible and yeah. seen is whatever you see. Yeah. Okay. So there is a seen, there is an unseen. Now it says faith is the evidence of what is not seen. Okay. If, let's say if this was the word of God, right? Right. This caused uh, this to be created. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now this is unseen, the Word of God, unseen. Nobody has seen the Word of God. But this, uh, whatever, this one is something that is seen. So now this one was made by the Word, and now he comes and says, hey, when we talk about hope, hope is unseen. So you're hoping for something that is not seen, but hope has an evidence, mm. and that is faith. Mm. So faith is the evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what was the evidence? The word mm -hmm. that is unseen. Mm -hmm. So if you take the word, you're already taking God. Okay. So now, if you allow, and the word is the water. So if you move upon the word, you're moving upon the water. Yeah. If you allow the word to flow in you, then you're allowing the water to flow in you. Mm -hmm. Where is the f uh, word flowing from? From the spirit. Who speaks the word? The spirit. Mm -hmm. Where is the spirit inside of you? So when you allow the spirit that is inside of you to start speaking a word, you're allowing the water that is inside of you to flow. You're allowing the river to start flowing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, a man is like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. Those who meditate on the law of the Lord are like a tree planted by the river, mm -hmm. which means the law of the Lord is the river, mm -hmm. is the water. Now, the law, don't be confused, he's not talking about the law of Moses, the law of the Lord, which is Christ, mm -hmm. the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So he says, a man that is planted by Christ, that is like a river flowing uh, in him and through him, is actually that tree. He says, whatever he does shall prosper. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Psalm chapter 1. Mm -hmm. So if I am as a man that is planted by this river, all that I need is a flow of the river mm -hmm. that causes me to be blessed in whatever I do, mm -hmm. to, be, to be prosperous in whatever I do. So now, <clears throat> keep that in mind and come to understanding that we're talking about hearing the voice of the Spirit. But where is the Spirit? Who, where is this God that you're talking about? You want to hear Him. Where? He's inside you. Inside of you. So the voice that you're going to be hearing, where is it coming from? Inside. Mm -hmm. So you're not hearing, you're not going to hear here. So this is not the ear that he's looking for. Mm -hmm. So the hearing of the voice is something internal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the way you're going to be hearing that voice is different every time. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's a spiritual experience. Yeah. <coughs> so it's not going to be all the time hearing uh, words. Mm -hmm. Whenever you hear me, you hear me when I just speak. Yeah. Right? But uh, sometimes actually you can also look at me, look at my face and my face can speak to you. Mm -hmm. True? Uh, I can move my hand and speak to you. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. I can say, which means, please, mm -hmm. help yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So every, you hear me uh, wow. through different things. Now, spirit is way beyond the flesh, mm -hmm. which means spirit has millions of ways to speak to you. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, because we are always focusing, as Rose said, in a certain way of hearing him, we miss, we miss. Mm -hmm. the other mm -hmm. 90, 990 time, other times that he's speaking to us. We don't even recognize that, hey, that, that is God speaking to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what helps to understand this is... Um, <coughs> Okay, we said it's about the spirit that is in the body, mm -hmm. right? What is the body, the temple of uh. the Holy Spirit? So we're talking about a spirit that is in a body or the Holy Spirit that is in the temple, his temple, which is your body. Mm -hmm. True? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in, in the old, this was the picture that we constantly had. We had uh, a tabernacle that had two parts. The first part was called the holy, and the second part was called the most holy place. Right? Yep. Yep. Okay, so now when Jesus came on earth, um, they said, what sign will you show us that you have the right to do these things? Which things? when he was cleansing the temple. He went into the temple and he started cleansing the temple. They said, what right or what authority uh, do you have? Where is it coming from? Show us a sign. And he said, this is my sign. Destroy this temple and I will raise it in three days. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. so Jesus, I'm sorry, Jesus. <laughs> okay. So he said, destroy this temple, which means this was a temple. Mm -hmm. And then he said, I will raise it up in three days. Still smiling. <laughs> so this is a temple. Right? Okay, this one... Um, We know that from this to this, something happened. There was this cross, crucifixion. What was here, he said, destroy it after three days, which means three days after my death, I will raise it up a new body. So this was the old temple. This is the new temple. Right? Mm -hmm. And now he did, uh, he said this when he was cleansing the temple. Mm -hmm. There was a temple on earth. He went inside uh, all those who were money exchangers, uh, keeping birds in uh, cages and stuff like that. He started throwing them out and cleansing the temple. So that was a sign mm -hmm. of him coming into a temple, cleansing it and making it ready for the Holy Spirit to come. Mm -hmm. So that was like coming to Adam and say, hey, let me cleanse you from everything so I can take everything out and I can bring my Holy Spirit inside of you so you can become the new temple. Mm -hmm. Right? So now uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, we read this one, the old temple, uh, the body of Jesus on earth was actually the last Adam. Right? Okay, so this was <coughs> actually Adam. The last Adam. This one is not Adam. This one is the Lord from heaven, which is Christ, resurrected Christ. Right? Okay, so now, 
if you look at um, the Old Testament, uh, in the story of the holy place and the most holy place, uh, what is very important about that picture is to get the understanding that you could never hear the voice of God here. Never. You would always have to go inside where the ark was, which on top had this mercy seat. Okay? And God told Moses, hey, make this because I'm going to come and between the cherubim and top of the mercy seat, on top of the blood on the mercy seat, here, I will speak with you and you will hear my voice. From there. Mm -hmm. So you want to hear the voice of God, this is where you're going to be hearing it. Hearing from here. Okay, so here you have the voice of God. But which God are we talking about? The Holy Spirit. The Spirit that is inside of you. Clear so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Jesus said, destroy this temple, I will raise a new one. What he was going to say, what he was trying to say is, uh, the reason this needs to happen, because your inheritance is here. Why? Because Moses had already shown in the Old Covenant that inside the ark was the testimony. which was the tablets of covenant, which is actually the word testament. Okay. Now, if this was only a shadow of the good things to come and the good came through Jesus, if there was a tablet of covenant under the old, there must be a tablet of covenant or testament in the new. Right? Mm -hmm. This was only a foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. Which means mm -hmm. there is going to be another tablet, not of stone, mm -hmm. but of flesh, mm -hmm. of the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, which means here, in this body, we're going to have a heart of flesh, which is the tablet of your testament. Right? Okay. So you're going to be speak you're gonna be hearing something, a voice inside of you that will give you access to what is written already here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me put this put it this way. Second Corinthians three says, um, God has made us sufficient ministers of the New Testament, not uh, written on tablets, not of stone, but of flesh. Mm -hmm. Not written by ink, but written by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So your heart is a tablet on which Holy Spirit has already written. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Testament. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this heart, you have every law of the Lord with details written in it. When we say the law of the Lord, again, it's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And it's written here, so all you need to do actually need to uh, read it. Mm. Okay. What I'm trying to say, I'm trying to bring us back to the simplicity that we are not waiting to hear God. Mm. It's in your heart written. What is in the heart? The heart is the place that we have the testament written in it. And the testament must become your inheritance. Mm. Because until it is only here, this is covered, and it, the tablet is here, you're not going to be able to read it. But actually, if, the, if you open this, and you go inside and get the tablet out, and you start looking at it and reading it, then you're going to make it an inheritance rather than just a piece of paper mm. <coughs> as your testament. Mm. 
Okay, so now let's come back to this picture. Through this picture, picture uh, God was showing us, or Jesus was showing us that as long as you are here, you're not going to be hearing God. Once again, you can hear God only here. Now he says, under the old, people never had access to this. Mm -hmm. They were priests, were always ministering here. Right. Daily standing serving. There was never a rest. But he says only their high priest once a year would come here and then would come out. That was once a year. He says, for us, Jesus has entered mm -hmm. here. And then he says, now, why are you standing here? Mm. Okay. Now, imagine this had two parts. This is a temple separated in two parts. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first part was the body of Jesus on earth before his death. Mm-hmm. When he was crucified, the veil was torn that was between the holy and the most holy. Mm -hmm. So what happened was this completely uh, died and was buried. What was risen was the new one, this one. Okay, what happened was uh, mm -hmm. this picture, when we see uh, the, t the tabernacle, the temple, we now understand that he says the body is the temple. Mm -hmm. So when we look at this picture, we have to understand then what is this section and what is this section? This was the old, this is the new. Mm -hmm. And God's will for, for us was never to remain in the old, but come into the new, mm -hmm. because everything is here. Okay, so when you come here, here you're going to hear, which means God wants you to see yourself as this one and not this one. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if you are this and he says you are, but your mind is here, mm -hmm. you're focusing on here, you're not going to be hearing God. Mm. If you don't see yourself being raised from the dead, yeah. once again, if you don't hear, see yourself that you're not this one, I'm not talking about spirit, even the body. Uh. Mm -hmm. Because this was in a temple, and the temple was the body. You can't have this here. Make sense? Right. Yeah. He said, I have to cleanse this temple. Mm -hmm. I have to make it new, then the Holy Spirit can come. Then He will give you a brand new heart and a brand new spirit. Right. That was the new covenant that he had already prophesied. So if you see your body as being raised from the dead, you're going to be hearing God more. Mm. Why? Because you're going to see the ark inside of you. Mm. You're going to see the tablet of the new covenant inside, and you're going to see what is already written in your heart. So what you're going to be doing, you're going to be speaking what is written in your heart. And what is written in your heart, it's not your own writing. Mm -hmm. It's the writing of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So when you start speaking, you're allowing God to speak. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Once again, what is written here inside is through the Holy Spirit. Mm. written in your heart. So out of the heart flows words coming to your mouth mm -hmm. and then you speak it. Mm -hmm. But before you can speak, there is a hearing that is happening. Right? So if the water flows from inside toward the outside, mm -hmm. and if it is a flow from the Spirit of God sending forth words like water, okay, mm. until you have a flow of them like a river. That means you're going to be in a position that actually from your heart starts flowing 
um, toward your mouth and in a form of a speaking uh, the words of God which are actually the Spirit of God mm. so the flow that we are talking about the river that we are talking about is about the words of God being spoken from the heart toward your mouth so the river flows this way okay now th this whole thing is through the spirit this is your walk even in the spirit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if you want to know how to walk in spirit all you need to do to hear to speak to hear to speak this is the walk that the spirit walks from your heart toward your mouth and releases something that has dominion over everything around you mm. the word of God Mm. Okay. Wow. I'm saying this to now bring it to a place that is simple to understand. Because now if you understand this picture and if you understand this picture, you understand that here you're going to be hearing the voice of God. Mm. On the ark, on the blood, inside this temple. Mm. So imagine. God says, you are being raised from the dead. Mm. Okay? And you don't know it. You see yourself that you are going to be raised from the dead one day. So what you're actually saying, saying, I'm this one. Mm. And you're saying, I'm not cleansed. And you're saying, I'm this one, in which there is no ark. Mm. Mm. Wow. Okay? Now, what do you do here? you're not going to ex be expecting to hear something from the inside. You're always waiting for some extraordinary voices to come. From to say, outside. Rose, go and do this. Mm -hmm. Just direct commands. <laughs> and that was the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. In the new, you're joined to the Lord and you're one spirit with Him. Can you say that again? In the old, you would... Uh, wait for a command from the Lord. In the new, you are joined to the Lord as one spirit with Him. Mm -hmm. Which means when you speak, it is the Lord speaking. Why? Because you're not speaking out of your own, you're speaking out of your heart, yeah. which has everything written in it. So now imagine, you have a desire in your heart, yeah. and you ask God whether I should do it or not. Mm -hmm. And He said, well, the fact that you're reading what is already in your heart, shows that I've been speaking to you. Mm. Now, when you're asking me, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's to say when the, the father comes and gives you, as Rose said, let's say a toy, and the guy right and he says, hey, enjoy it. And he comes and says, the son comes and says, Daddy, can I go and play with this? He said, I just told you. It was my idea. I bought it for you. Yeah. Mm. But now, when it becomes complicated, when we, don't, we lose the simplicity, it becomes complicated. Yeah. Because then you're trying to hear. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we see ourselves here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, practically, what does this mean? It means, you know what? I actually am the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I actually have the Ark of the Covenant inside of me. My heart is actually the place that Moses... Uh, worked so hard to get into a mountain and get those words written on mm. his tablets but for me I'm on the mountain of the spirit okay <laughs> and he has written in my heart with the finger of God mm. with the Holy Spirit on my heart so mm. and what was the command to them hey read this law constantly meditate on it which means they had to grab the tablets of stone in front of their eyes and they just read what God says. Basically God's trying to say, hey, look at your heart, look at what I have put inside of you, start reading it, mm. start speaking it. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, I said this before, uh, Psalm 19 says that the voice of the Lord is over many waters. Many waters are Water and water and water and water and water. Mm. So he's trying to say word and word and word and word. He's trying to say a continuous flow of the word 
causes the voice of God to be heard. Mm. Okay, so now when we say the hearing of the Holy Spirit because He is one Spirit with you when you hear Him it's going to sound like you. So it's, that's why it's not like um, if you're waiting for something like um, something that is not like you maybe you're wasting your time. Mm. because he's one spirit with you, right? He has become one, like Rose and I, uh, we have the same language, we have the same conversations, we have the same, like if she would speak, you would hear me. If you uh, hear me, it's like hearing her because we've spent time together, we've talked together, we are one. Yeah. Now, this oneness is even in the form of just husband and wife. But with him, he says there is no separation. You're just exactly one spirit with him. Hmm. So if you want to hear God, uh, God is a spirit, and that spirit is one with you. So when you start speaking, you're going to be actually hearing God. Mm -hmm. So the fastest way to hear God is when you start speaking. Right. But if you don't speak and you wait for it, okay, then it's hard. I'm not saying that there is, this is the only form, no. Uh, there is all sorts of hearing that you're going to have. But what is sure and guaranteed to hear the voice of God is when you start actually opening your mouth. Yeah. And what you're going to do, uh, I gave this analogy before. Um, here we don't see it much back home uh, when... Uh, you, you wanted to get some tap water. In the beginning, when you open the tap, it would be just dirt coming out. In the pipe, whatever. You wait for 30 seconds, all the dirt is gone, then you get pure water. Mm. It's the same thing for us. You start speaking. It may be you in the beginning. Just start saying something, whatever revelation that he had given you, let's mm. say, two years ago, not even yesterday. Let's say he, one day he showed you something. Start speaking that. As you're speaking, you would be amazed that actually at one day it will come to a place that it's pure water. Mm. You know that it's the Spirit of God speaking. Yeah. But if you never open the tap, you would never get the pure water. Yeah. And as Masood said, that is not the only way. That is not the only way. Yeah. So... Seeing yourself as this temple, which is, there is nothing wrong with it. Seeing yourself as the body of the Lord that has the spirit of the Lord in it. Mm -hmm. Causes you to have access to what is written as your inheritance on your heart that has been hidden from your eyes. Yeah. So if you see that, then you would see uh, the fulfillment of so many things. For example, Ezekiel 47 gives a picture of the future temple. It's after Moses, after Solomon, they're all destroyed, gone, right? He's talking about a temple that will come in future. And then he says, I saw out of, under the threshold, you need to see this, wow. under the threshold of the gate of the temple, a river flowing from the mouth, okay? And then he, he says, I saw the water, it was first to ankle, then it was to the knee, then it was to the waist. Then it came to a place that no one could actually walk anymore, but it was just a swimming. So it would come to a place that it wouldn't be you, it wouldn't be you walking, it's the place that you would be taken by the Spirit. You, you would be carried by the Spirit rather than you carrying the Spirit. Yeah. But if you don't start with the ankle, you would never get to knee. If you don't mm. get to the knee, you will never get to the waist. Yeah. If you never get to the waist, yeah. you would never get to a place that mm -hmm. you can swim. Wow. Mm -hmm. mm. wow. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's, That's awesome. That is exciting. Yeah. 
So it might sound like, what am I going to say? Start by something. Start with something. Yeah. Start by something. And hey, uh, once again, uh, it, don't take it serious. Don't think that you have to be <laughs> quoting perfect <laughs> scripture. Don't think that, like, uh, why should I waste God's time by saying you're not wasting? He, he's no not in time. time. No one's time. He doesn't know what time is. Mm -hmm. Time is yours, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So when you start speaking, uh, like Rose and I, we talk about everything. Mm. We talk about cooking, going out, Bible study, reading, uh, buying laptop, whatever. We talk about everything. So why do you think that with God you can't talk mm -hmm. about details? Why don't you mm -hmm. think that you can actually talk to Him about chips? Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Because yeah. if you mm -hmm. don't see those things, then you say, okay, now what, what should I say? You have lots of things to say. Yeah. You can actually go to washroom and start talking about yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pick up something and talk to And <laughs> the amazing thing is, I actually my in the beginning uh, ninety percent of the hearing the voice of God for me was in bathroom. <laughs> I'm honest. Yeah. Because of the background, no, because no, of the background that uh, I was brought in, uh, believing that hey everything is holy, you are unholy, don't touch the book, don't uh, do this, don't don't even touch it. And thinking about taking it to bathroom, I go to bathroom with my Bible. I read Bible when I'm there, right? So when I was there, it was like after a while, I, I said, what's happening? And uh, it, I heard the Holy Spirit saying that there's nothing wrong with this. Yeah, because bathroom, back, back home bathroom in the, that it's belief unclean. system, it was the unclean. You would never bring the name of God or talk to God in the bathroom, now, in the washroom. So. He says, you are the temple. Yeah. So when he, wh wherever you go, he comes with you. You can't say, hey, stay away. I'm going to bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So if he comes with you to bathroom, he might talk to you in the bathroom. So now if he can talk to you in the bathroom, he can break forever mm -hmm. that mindset that there is for God, like bathroom as, and living room are two different things. Mm -hmm. And then you can your wrong belief that would cause you not to hear him in bathroom forever is gone. Yeah. So you can hear him in bathroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there are lots of things like that that we believe. Uh, now, the whole thing about this, we believe that uh, we are unclean mm. because this was unclean. Adam, Jesus said, I'm going to cleanse it. Mm -hmm. And he made you his <coughs> own body. Mm -hmm. So that here you can know that there is never a time that this ark will be taken out because it's the ark of the covenant. Mm -hmm. It's the ark of the testament and he's going to remain in you forever. Wow. So now, Masud and I, we have developed the way that we have developed reading the Bible. We have developed hearing the spirit. So we have our own way of teaching ourselves yeah. to to hear the spirit more clearly, yeah. more accurately. It's the same way with the Bible. You can preach something, but you can have, you can be not accurate. Mm -hmm. The level of purity of the truth that you are preaching, it could be different. Mm -hmm. It's the same way of hearing his voice. I can add this here. Um, let's say uh, one of the ways that uh, you can hear is actually also start writing. Yeah. Because when you start writing... It's like a speaking, but you're writing. It's yeah. like speaking. Now, imagine if I talk to you and say, and I want to encourage you, I would talk to you from the heart of God toward you. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't talk to you about what I think. Mm. So what I would try to do is to actually speak to you whatever God wants to speak to you. From the even heart if, of God. Yeah, yeah, even if it seems like I'm not hearing anything, I'm going to be encouraging you. Mm -hmm. Right. So what am I doing? I'm actually on God's behalf speaking to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So as I'm doing this, uh, again, specific things would come out. Mm -hmm. That is something that only God knows and he would be speaking to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if I can do that to you from God, I can do that to myself. Mm -hmm. I can encourage myself 
and yeah. start writing to myself as God is speaking to me. I can say my son. Okay, mm -hmm. I can say that, yes, I am with you. Yeah. Okay, it's like, wow. in the beginning, it might be hard because you're starting to writing, start writing to yourself and uh, it seems like it's me, but then just continue. Yeah. Just write half seconds. a page. You need just 30 seconds to cure the water and yeah. you're good. So now when it comes to that place, you will find yourself that uh, instead of going this way, it's like, okay, next page, wow, <laughs> next page, wow. It's always that way. Yeah. Masood has pages, page after pages of writings, what the Spirit told him. Every, every, uh, like my, I have my journal, I write in my journal. Masood doesn't have a journal, so he writes everywhere he finds a piece of paper. Yeah. Right. And he has... I sow seeds. <laughs> everywhere you go to clean up, to open the drawer or something, there are packs of writings there. We write from God to ourselves all the day, a lot of time. So you, yeah. you, like, it's like you're ministering, you want to give words of, you want to give a word to somebody. Give it to yourself. And that's yeah. God. See yourself as somebody that is in the street. And when you start doing it, and even, <laughs> and that's, it is, this is even we do, we, this is even we do the prayer. Our prayer is like that. We speak to ourselves from the mouth of God. Yeah. So when I want to go prophesy over Guillermo, I have already done it a million times for myself. Oh, okay. It's the same way for Guillermo. I speak to Guillermo through the mouth. My mouth is the mouth of God when I want to speak to him. So I speak to myself from his mouth. You can actually teach God. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm honest. If you, you have can, done it, Jesus, yeah. sit here. Let me tell you what the book of Genesis says. Like I, if I had kids, I wanted them to come and say, I wanted to see whether they, they've learned whatever I've been teaching them. Nothing. Right? So just take a chance. That's start. In college. And you're safe because it's not, I'm not. I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> you know? I'm not the teacher of your school. I'm not somebody that is waiting uh, to give you a negative mark or s anything. I'm just. I just want to help you. Yeah, so start, me. teach me. W say, who am I? Yeah. Didn't just assume Jesus say that I am a student, yeah. you are a teacher. So <coughs> we do the same thing with Jesus. Okay, Jesus, you know, we assume you are a student, I am the teacher. Let me just teach. Wow. Yeah. Now, sometimes he smiles and he laughs. <laughs> there is a verse in oh, wow. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, again a quote from, I think it's Isaiah. That he says, um, as it was written, who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Mm. But we have the mind of Christ. Okay? Right. You can read it whatever you, the way you want, but you can read it this way. Who has a mind that is able to teach him? <laughs> of course, you can't teach him, mm. but can you take the word that is his word and come to him and start talking to him about his word. Hmm. So if, let's say, if I can take a word of God, that's the counsel of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? I can start talking to him and I'm, when, I'm, when we are talking together, we are actually in a meeting. Yeah. We are brainstorming. Hmm. No, honestly, because mm -hmm. how, how do you want to hear from him? Yeah. It's a conversation. It's a, the way even God convinces you of something, is a, as, it is as if he can take you through the whole process. Mm -hmm. So you talk to him and you say, okay, it's like this. And then he says something mm. to you. And then you talk to him about something else. Because you know how he thinks, you can have a dialogue with him the way he thinks. Yeah. Because you have the mind of Christ. And you don't talk in your mind. You don't, yeah. Um, you can, you but you can, don't always. You can talk to your in your mind, but you don't. We we don't. Most of the time, we talk as we're talking together. 
because you and I are talking, you are not going to think and I'm going to think and you answer. Yes, with Jesus you can do it. I get it. Do it. But, but he's a real person. So I talk loud to him. I answer myself loud as I'm talking to a real person. I really assume that he's sitting there and I'm talking to him. So, so they are only this um, uh, examples that the Holy Spirit has taught us how to develop our hearings. Um, so many times, um, we, I, you know, I'm taking a shower, I'm sitting somewhere, I can just sit here and I can watch a movie. I can just watch a movie and tell you about the movie. So the Holy Spirit shows me things. I'm, I'm gone. I'm somewhere else. Or, or he's, or he's um, that happened to Masood a lot. I think that happens to him too because all of a sudden you find yourself somewhere else preaching. Because we preach to Jesus. So, so you're preaching to Jesus and all of a sudden you feel like I'm preaching somewhere. I'm really preaching to a group of people. I'm really somewhere preaching, and I will not be. If, yeah. I will not be shocked mm -hmm. if down the road someone comes and says, "Thanks for coming to our church. You were preaching. That was really good." And I go, mm -hmm. "Huh? I was in the bathroom taking a shower." Yeah. Right. So, and those things only helps you to develop you to hear His voice better. Reading it, reading yeah. the reading the Bible. Reading the Bible helps yeah. you to hear the voice of God. See, in front of Him, we have to become children. Yeah. Okay. We shouldn't be mature. Yeah. In front of Him. Yeah. Which means we have to be in a place that we take everything simple. We yeah. have to see Him as the Father. And then, well, actually something, I'm going to say something personal. Um, I, a few, a couple of months ago, I found myself, after two, three weeks, I, maybe a month or so, I had not realized that I've been talking to things that cannot talk back. Mm. I started talking to my shoes, mm -hmm. to my jacket, to TV, yeah. to stuff, right? They, don't, they can't talk back, but I started talking. And I didn't realize until one day, Holy Spirit said, do you know what's been happening? And he said, no. He said, your innocence is being restored. Mm. Mm. And I said, like, what do you exactly mean? Mm. And he said, well, you are becoming like a child. You're not acting mature anymore. <laughs> oh Have you seen childs talking oh to their... Yeah. Yeah, children talk to their toys. They talk to everyone. They talk, mm. I talk to my Bible, mm. right? Be, why? Like, it's not a theology. It's not written somewhere that you can take it. But it shows that your heart is coming to a place that it's not taking everything serious anymore. Wow. Mm. It can rest. It can enjoy some of the things. You can actually mm. be... <laughs> <laughs> So if, if you come to that place, it's yeah. like things become much easier. easier. Then hearing God is like, in the same moment, like I wouldn't talk to God <laughs> before, like let's say until seriously a year, two years ago. Um, it was always like Father. Mm -hmm. What the Bible called, calls at, uh, as, um, says as Abba was not my language. So now, I don't call him Abba because I'm not Hebrew, <laughs> right? I have my own version of Abba, so I can talk to him that way. Mm. And that removes lots of burdens because if you don't see him that way, you're going to see him as like this just uh, classic fathers, yeah. the heads of the family that is sitting... <laughs> Traditional families. <laughs> ten feet away from you. British families, you know, you can't even talk to them. You can't yeah. spend time with them. Yeah. 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 And yeah. you don't see yourself intimate. Yeah, we have our own intimate language with God. 
it's only for us so internet i wouldn't talk to god like that in front of you like i wouldn't talk so that maybe have an intimate language I wouldn't talk that way in front of you to Masood. It's the casual, it's our own thing. Right? Something developed between Something the developed two. between us. We have our own language. We have our own words. So when he says something, I know. So it's the same thing with God. It's the same thing. The way I call him, and maybe it's blasphemy of so many people, but he's my dad, you know. It's because eventually that's it. That's a relationship. Yeah, yeah. I told you one time I was in, um, uh, we were two years Christian, so we went to, the, to Arizona for this um, conference. So we are in the front line for worship time. It's a worship time. I know that, um, so no Iranian is there. So we are in front and we are just uh, worshiping and all of a sudden I heard someone is speaking in Farsi. So I thought this person is talking on the phone with her dad. And it was so intimate that you don't hear that somebody talking to the dad in public. Back home, you know, you have this intimate, uh, really, you, I never had a good relationship with my dad, right? With my natural dad. So that's why it was very interesting for me that it was very obvious that this girl had a very intimate friendship conversation with dad so because she started the way that she started hey dad you know it was like i can't enforce it in my language i turned and she was speaking in tongues her language got when i turned to look at her to see like she's talking and i realized that and then she 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 changed the language and i couldn't understand i realized she's just speaking in tongues so i went to her after and i said hey do you speak farsi she's like what's farsi is it eatable? <laughs> like, <laughs> what is it doing there? <laughs> like, I said, no, it's a language. It's a, my, I'm from Iran, and you were speaking in my language. She goes, really? No, I was speaking in tongues. It was so intimate. So that's why. So we said all of these things. It's just to, just to help us to realize, okay, if it's if if it's if you feel like it's hard, you just need to become a you need just need to become simpler. It is simple. He's a father, you are the child, and there's no struggle. It is simple. Yeah, I can add something um, about Okay. Even now, because you've been hearing uh, us speaking, as you're hearing, you're hearing the Holy Spirit too, mm -hmm. without you recognizing. Because it's He's bearing witness to what you're hearing. That's why you say, uh, if you didn't have the Spirit speaking to you, you couldn't actually take what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the Spirit in you is telling you this is true. Yes. If it's not true, it's going to tell you this is not true. Mm -hmm. And then you say, mm, I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, because of what you've been hearing, even now, it's easier to you to hear from God. Mm -hmm. To hear from the Holy Spirit. Because you've been in an environment that nothing except the Word of God is being spoken in the last two, three hours. Mm -hmm. Right? So you're ready. Your senses are exercised now. Mm -hmm. And you can hear God. Yeah. Now you can say you, there is no struggle to believe that you, He loves you now. Yeah. Because you've been hearing this. You've been mm -hmm. hearing the Spirit constantly now. His language is more real to you now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So when, when you go to bed and tomorrow morning you wake up, because you come out of, uh, you were sleeping, you come out and your immediate conscience is uh, kids and work and this and that, uh, you find yourself in the middle of those things and then all of a sudden you remember God. Mm. And because you're not ready in that moment, you feel like you are far from God. Mm. 
but he hasn't changed mm -hmm. from last night, yeah. since last night. He's the same. Mm -hmm. But because our senses are not exercised, it's a bit hard. So now when you go to gym, when you, you want to uh, exercise, you don't immediately start with... Uh, 100 pounds. <laughs> yeah, weights. You start actually getting warmed up. You okay. maybe spend five minutes, ten minutes on treadmill. Maybe you start with some stretching, something. It's the same thing with the spirit. If you start actually having those stretches, then you're going to be able to exercise more mm. in spirit. So tomorrow, actually, you can put yourself in that place that you are now. Yeah. Just by spending five minutes, just as we've been sharing, just take it and do mm -hmm. it allow what is inside of you to flow through you let yourself be drinking from mm -hmm. the well that is inside of you let the waters come out let the speaking happen mm 